So while I'm erasing the board, I would like to continue that uh, my today's talk would also be out of political correctness. <laughs> so basically, I would like to I would like to discuss the following topic. Um, so uh, the title would be hmm. Universal Infrared Problems of Universal String Theory. So I have problems with the markers. But you know, like in the movie Pulp Fiction, if there are problems, there is a problem solver. Okay, and uh, and Swiba as a universal problem solver. So it is the title. One second. So I will consider today infrared problems in two seemingly different string theories. Namely, I will start with B topological theory, B topological strings, and then bosonic strings. You see, since this course was called B theory, I have here B and here B. And in both B theories, there are similar infrared problems. And uh, then I'll argue that Zwieber solves both of them. And also, I'd like to say that uh, there is another approach, alternative approach, that I don't quite know. Alternative approach. It's called MB Twister strings. But ambitwister strings uh, solve this problem for bosonic strings. And I don't know what would be the analog of ambitwister for B topological strings. OK, I have some conjectures, but so I am not sure if I'll go to, the, uh, to discuss it today. Maybe I'll just mention at the end. And maybe we'll discuss and between some strings later on, not today. Because today I'm going to make quite strong statements. And uh, these are statements about the apparently serious problems that uh, they are infrared problems in uh, string theory. Okay. 
So usually I start this with bosonic strings, but today I'd like to change the presentation and uh, I'll uh, start with B topological strings. Okay? So this, uh, this would be a kind of continuation of uh, what I was talking uh, about uh, on Thursday. Do I need to know what you what you were talking about on Thursday? I, I was not I was not on the uh, Thursday seminar. Of course, uh, so Pasha, so uh, for America, I'll repeat. Okay. Good. <laughs> so so do does it make sense to talk about infrared? Problems at all if if it's a conformal field theory and of infrared. Course. Of course, of course. So we, we will see what are the infrared problems, and I'd like to make it clear that it's really a problem. It's not something that uh, you can ignore. It's something that happens in uh, general position, and moreover, it's infrared, not. Uh, how to say? You will see in which sense it is an infrared problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be related to the non compactness of the moduli space of complex structures. Okay. Okay. But ultraviolet <laughs> problems are also related to non compactness. So, uh, so actually, so, so let me put it this way. Uh, from my point of view, uh, you, you'll see. Mm -hmm. You see, if I'll try to explain these problems uh, without giving some uh, input information, it would be unclear. No, 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 sorry, sorry, of course. Um, So, uh, so uh, let me start with some warm up. And uh, this warm up would be a reminder of the B model. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because uh, so, Pasha, maybe you were there. Okay. So, still, I'll, I'll briefly remind. The B model, and, and then I'll come to the problems. Okay. So, quick reminder of B model. I was not on Thursday's seminar, so yeah, I, I, if, I, I was on the Wednesday's lecture. Ah, so, okay, so, so still, let, let, let me, mm -hmm. so then will be continuation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so let, let me briefly remind. Uh, what happened? So this is bosonic piece of the action. There is also a fermionic piece of the action. Sorry, what I'm writing. So these are left and also right. So, uh, and then this G is a metric. And then let me put here the coupling constant. So we can see what the coupling constant is. So instead of saying that it is the size of the metric, I'll just put this coupling, coupling constant in front. So, so, so that's what we have. Then, let me say that 
what do we understand about sigma model? We understand about sigma model that sigma model is defined perturbatively in G naught square. Okay. So uh, if somebody says that he understands B model non perturbatively, it would be great. But uh, let us assume that sigma model is defined perturbatively in G naught square. At least for Kalabiyao manifolds, and we would like to work with Kalabiyao manifolds, naively, we have this definition only perturbative. Because theory on Kalabiyao is not uh, integrable system, is not exactly solvable system, is not uh, a rational theory, except the case when Kalabiyao is a torus. But uh, let us work not on the torus, but on the curved manifold. So how can we compute it? We can, we can compute it perturbatively in G naught square. Moreover, I want to say, I will not uh, concentrate on it, but uh, you may check that G naught square dependence is exact. So, so one can check it from twisted supersymmetry, and I will not explain this. So we may say, good. Uh, then why we are not studying the definition? Like let, let us be uh, what do you mean exactly? Uh, exactly mean Q exact? Yes, of course Q exact. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying general words, I would prefer to study the following object. Four vertex operators and then G fields. and see how it depends on G0. Let us try to do it perturbatively in G0. So on Wednesday, we, we discussed what are the vertex operators. So vertex operators were corresponding to what? To Beltrami differentials. So here I just want to say, let us consider, let us consider the very, the well-known case, BCOV 1993 published. So it is 27 years old. More than the quarter of the century. So what, what it would be an exercise that uh, I'd like to propose us to do? Let us compute it. If everything is that clear, we would be we should be able to compute it. And uh, and to reproduce after computation, so we should be able to reproduce the formula. for the propagator. Hmm? So the exercise would be to do the following. But we the, just plug in. The, this equality, the V equals mu, is it uh, exact or more? No, I have not finished it. OK. You see? So uh, first, what? I propose to compute. So, uh, and the idea is, let us try to, com to compute it in the limit G naught square going to zero. Of course, because it's the only limit in which we can compute it. So, 
I will be a problem maker. So here there are two mules. So this is the world sheet mu. So I would call it mu world sheet. Okay. And uh, this would be a target space mu. Mm. I hope we will not uh, mix them. Because this corresponds to to taking uh, to, to tangent factors to the modular space. So uh, what I'll propose you to what what I'd like to propose. Let us compute this this thing, okay? And uh, after we will compute this thing, let us take an integral. After all, uh, everything is explicit, and but m zero four is just CP one. Why why is it not zero? So the mu world sheet it's. I mean, the world sheet depends on world sheet metric is Q exact. Uh, no. So dependence are, ah, sorry. Dependence on the world sheet metric is because it's the string theory. We, so. Uh, ah, sorry. Yeah, okay. You, so I, I explained that. That is that. So the title of my talk was Universal Problems in Universal uh, String Theory. So in universal string theory, you can set a theory such that energy momentum tensor is the Q exact. Mm -hmm. Then you write down this thing and uh, you assume that you get uh, a measure on the moduli space and you integrate, right? So it is a, this is the prescription that people repeat many times during the last 35 years, they're repeating this all the time. Moreover, people are claiming that they are studying B theory, B topological theory. Since, uh, since it could be studied in the limit G naught square going to zero, this has to be absolutely clear. I mean, this computation. Sorry, before I'll do this computation, let me do the simpler computation to check that we understand what is going on. So simpler computation is to consider three points. In. So uh, this computation uh, is uh, pretty simple. So what we are doing? Here we do not need to integrate anything. Uh, we take three Beltrami differentials. So Beltrami differentials have so have fermions psi. Okay. So action is clear. So uh, I will I will write V's here. So V is Beltrami differential on the target multiplied by Psi J bar. That is a scalar and field Pi I, Pi J. So you may ask what the field Pi J is. And this guy has an index plus. So pi j is <coughs> gi j bar times what? Times psi j bar minus. OK? So when we are trying to compute this thing, we need just to plug in such formulas and see what is going on.
So uh, here we do not need to integrate because uh, it it is a because m not m not three is a point. So so I have to do this computation. So let us try to do it together. And here I put one. Here I put two. Here I put three. So what? So what do we know? We know that uh, we have zero modes of fields psi and pi. Okay, and we have, and we definitely have to soak up the zero modes. So the number of zero modes of psi equals to equals to dimension of the manifold, and it is three. So we have three zero modes. of psi and three zero modes of pi. So here we also have six fermions. So zero modes are soaked up and, uh, and people say that this result equals to to what? It equals to three Beltrami differentials inserted into holomorphic top form. Because there are zero modes. And uh, here is another holomorphic top form. OK, I'll write it. Integral on Calabi of 3 holomorphic top form. And here we have three Beltrami differentials inserted into holomorphic top form. Good. So we understand this. And moreover, this computation is uh, presented in uh, all uh, papers on B model. So the, the, this is a three point function. Okay. So I show this three point function computation just to show you that uh, something would be changed when we go to the four point function. Okay. Um, what, why, why is the integral of, over the target? Because, because on the target, there is also, of course, a zero mode uh, of the uh, bosonic field. Mm -hmm. And bosonic field uh, goes through the target. Okay, l l l let us look at this action. So here we have the following zero modes. Zero modes of fermions, mm -hmm. totally six of them. Mm -hmm. Three here and three here. And also uh, zero modes of bosons. So mm -hmm. zero modes of fermions had to be soaked up. Mm -hmm. And uh, zero modes of uh, uh, bosons have to be integrated over the compact space. I see. So, 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 so this is Calabi Yao 3 manifold. Mm -hmm. hmm? So this thing is nothing but the zero mode computation. So everybody, so everybody is happy. Right? 
-hmm. Then, if everybody, then every, if everybody is happy, let us try to to make similar computation for the point for the full point function. Mm -hmm. And of course, here you may ask, what about non-zero modes? Okay, maybe non-zero modes could also contribute because you may say that there are correlators between axes, okay? And then there are other couplings of psi with axes. But then you may say, look, we can ignore it because we work in the leading order of G naught squared, okay? Or put it differently, propagator is proportional to G naught squared, okay? So, uh, so when the limit G naught square goes to zero, propagators, so there, there could be propagators, yes? There could be interactions with the curvature, it, it just drops out, okay? And everybody knows this formula. You can pretty well justify it. Hmm? So how does omega top appear in this computation? It's, it's a good uh, it's a good question so somehow somehow this is anomalous theory so we started with the supersymmetric sigma model where we expect that the measure on the fields is given with the help of metric mm -hmm. and then we are making a twist okay and uh, and after this twist, we have unbalanced uh, uh, fermionic systems. So some fermions do have zero moles, some do not. So, uh, so when we are making this twisting, we have zero moles. So we need to define a measure on them. So we need to take precautions and put uh, holomorphic top forms in order to define the measures, the measure on uh, fermions. So actually it means that we have a measure on fermions. So we cannot just write for zero modes. Mm -hmm. ah, so it's kind of, it's a part of the measuring path integral essentially. Yes, yes. So, so mm -hmm. we cannot write it like this, you see? Mm -hmm. So, so, so what, what, what will this mean? Actually, one, two, three. Uh, we need to define this somehow, this measure. So in order to define this measure, we use a uh, uh, non-vanishing top form or Calabi-Yau top form. So actually these have bars here, okay. Sometimes I'm lazy to put bars on Psi. Uh, it it uh, means that they are anti-holomorphic. And I, I don't pe put bars on Pi's. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's better not to call them Pi, it will confuse. Maybe it's better to put, to call them Cetus. So, so people call them differently. But what's important is that they are holomorphic in terms of target and uh, they have uh, the, the index downstairs. So functions of them are uh, poly vector fields. And here we consider just vector field, uh, just uh, Beltrami differentials. So this computation is clear, but then you may look into this paper, BCOV, 1993. 
I don't remember where, where it was, uh, maybe 92, when, maybe it appeared as a preprint in 92 and published in 93. I don't remember the exact year when it came as a preprint. However, it was like 200 page long. And you may ask, if computation that I'm going to discuss was made in this paper. And you know what? So people give uh, like 1,000 citations here. Maybe more, I don't know. It's very popular. Everybody know what BCOV is. The question is, how many people looked inside the paper to read it? So actually not so many. It's because people are lazy. And uh, those who went inside would be surprised that this computation that we will try to make is missing in this paper, okay? So, uh, Kolya, I, I was telling you that I am not going to give a political correct seminar. There will be no political jokes. However, there will be reputational jokes, I'm sorry. So you may ask, why this computation was not done in this paper? Why they had 200 pages? It occupied the full journal, the full volume. Then, of course, you, you skipped through different papers on B model. And uh, most probably you attended many talks. So there are like 100 talks on B model. So people are doing mirror symmetry. Of course, they have to say B model. Of course, they have to say BCOV. So other, other words, what is B model? It is this. And then you may have a strange feeling. How did it happen that I have never seen this computation? Okay. How did it happen? And just imagine, let us play this game, that uh, you have some time. And uh, so if you have your time, it means that you are a postdoc, okay? Because other people typically have no time. So only postdocs Not true. have time to, no, Not it's true. true. Not, Not true. true. Even postdocs that don't have time. Postdocs are the primary category of people who have no time because there's an aches next to their neck. Okay, so it means that nobody has time. Good. Uh, ah, so, uh, so it means that there should be some people outside the academical uh, track. So uh, students don't have time because they are passing exams. Postdocs don't have time because, okay. Seniors should have time, right? So professors don't have time because they have administrative duty, teaching, uh, grants, students. Okay, so nobody has time. And this is, this is, this somehow explains why there was only one person who gave me the proper answer on what is going on. And this person uh, was uh, <clears throat> Jen Pin, okay? So, so it happened that he had time uh, to, to understand it, but still. I have time. So well, let us just see that we have time. Let us try to compute it. Hmm? So what should we see? What should we get? Here we'll have four, four Beltrami differentials with fermions. Only one from this Beltrami differential would, uh, uh, would uh, contain uh, non-zero modes because all the rest would give their 
fermions for zero moles. So what, what would we expect? Of course, we would expect that this Beltrami differential would have a contraction here. Okay? Because uh, let me recall what is G. G is, of course, nothing else but Psi X. However, this is Psi that is one zero. So, <clears throat> so this has holomorphic index and this should have anti-holomorphic index, right? So let me write here G. It is, it is how it should look like. Okay. Now it has X and Psi. So there is another G, okay? So what we expect? Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a signal that I am out of power. So, there should be non-zero mode of psi, non-zero mode of x. Okay? And similarly here. So the question is, how many propagators should I have? Hmm? What would you say? Uh, two. Totally. So, non so for G, I, ha I should have two propagators, but there is also G bar. So totally. At least for them, yes. So mm -hmm. totally, I should have four propagators, okay? Mm -hmm. Four propagators. So of course, this is divided by Lino square. Why so four yeah. propagators. You see, because G not square comes together with the no. metal. Why four propagators again? Uh -huh. Good. So let us see. So how many non-zero modes do I have? So, uh, so I should have two propagators coming out of G. Because here, here I have non-zero mode, and here I have non-zero mode. And they don't, they don't have, uh, but they should all eat somebody in mu, but mu has only two things in it. So no, mu, please. Mu has X inside it. So, so, I, so I need to have two fermionic propagators and two bosonic propagators. Sorry. Uh, Still, why two fermionic? You have one uh, coming out of psi in G and uh... one in G bar also. Can okay? I thought can G and G bar connect? No, the, 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 they, they don't interact. So to to see this. Uh... So, uh, would they interact, there will be a pole in the correlator. So, you, you may check that they do not interact. And also, this dx, you see, here we have dx. Okay, so dx cannot, cannot, cannot go to d bar x. So, here we have d bar x. And here we have dx. So, they do not, do not propagate. Propagator is not here. So once again, here we have two. 
So here we have uh, two non-zero modes of psi, one here and one here. So they have, and he, and we have, say, V4, and two non-zero modes here. So we, we should have. two fermionic propagators and also two bosonic propagators. So at the moment, I don't know where bosonic propagator would end and where fermionic propagator would end. But it is clear that I should have two fermionic propagators and two bosonic propagators, right? Because I have four non-zero modes in GG bar. Okay. Two fermionic non-zero modes, two bosonic non-zero modes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Kolya, you you have a good critical mood. Could you please check? Maybe I made a mistake in counting the number of propagators. No, I, th I think I agree now. You agree, yes? So... Though I still didn't catch why Psi inside of G cannot... Uh, cannot... Propagate with what? With Psi inside of G bar. But, because... The, it would the, be a 2 comma 0 form. Okay. Because it's 0, 1. Mm -hmm. D bar X. I say, I say. Okay. Because it's zero one here and one zero here. Mm -hmm. So they cannot go this way. Okay. So all together, we have two bosonic propagators, two fermionic propagators. So for each propagator, we have G naught square totally g not square to the power 4. However, for each g, we have 1 over g not square here. g not square to the power 2. Altogether, we have a great result. g not square to the power 2. So you know what this would mean, okay? It means that we have a great result. And this great result is that if we take this object and take g naught square to zero, so it's a fair limit. It's exactly the limit where we get nice three-point function. Then this correlator goes, you know where? Correlator goes to zero. So it actually has a limit. Come on. We may consider V coupling limit of the B model. This object tends to zero. And of course, that is why you will never get this, you will never see this computation in the BCOV. 1993, by the way, because it's Wafa, who is one of the authors here, and Wafa is well known to guess great formulas, but being quite sloppy in uh, derivations. So, uh, you see, I have great respect to Wafa, because uh, you see, to guess great formulas is good enough. But when it comes to derivations, hmm? 
So it will be better if you will never try to give derivations because derivations uh, are strange. However, our formulas are correct. It's great. You see. But during the next 27 years, people were publishing papers, getting grants, making laboratories, like my laboratory in Moscow, laboratory of the mirror symmetry. And I'm pretty sure that nobody in laboratory of the mirror symmetry knows this fact. Okay? Making conferences on B model. People are studying different aspects of B model. Nobody is computing the four point function. Hmm? So, what's the significance of this fact? Ah, uh, so, 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 so first, I, I want you to accept this fact that I told you that. Uh, I will uh, explain to you problems, okay? So first you need to see that it's a problem. And uh, another, uh, there is another problem. And this well, problem is why, that... why is it a problem? Why is it a problem? It just looks okay. It, it, we're, we're computing it, it, some kind it, of gram of Witten invariant and it turned out to be zero or some... Ah, it's because, uh, it's because it's written everywhere that this is not zero. This object, so people know after the work of BCOV that this object is not zero. And people believe that, uh, that the correct result is. The Massey operation, Massey is like this. I call him Massey, maybe. So he definitely is an Englishman. So people. He's uh, American. He was American, actually. Okay. Maybe he is an Indian. Oh, sorry. Okay. So how to pronounce him? Messi, I think. No, Messi, because Messi has the wrong connotation. So Messi product, you see, it's. No, so I'm saying that the stress goes in the first syllable. Okay, Messi. Ah, it's a good uh, to call him Messi product, you see. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Messi, you know, world shit, Messi product, <laughs> you know it's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So. <laughs> So, so we cannot get the messy, the, the messy product from the world sheet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a strange, but but you need to multiply to build Rami differential to get a two comma two. Okay. So this product belongs to. Lambda two zero of T holomorphic times omega zero two. Okay. Then what can we do? We need to plug it in the holomorphic top form. Then we need to apply the following formula. Okay. And then we put here mu mu and integrate together with with top form. I have just a very stupid question. Why it was believed that this is not zero? Ah, correlator. Uh... Ah, uh, you see, it's because uh, would it be zero? It would be so-called trivial, simple trivial theory. It also, of course, it satisfies WDVV because uh, this product is associative, but it, it's, it definitely could not, could not be a, a mirror to anything. Hmm. And also, uh, yes, yes. 
And but what is important, what I'd like to stress, is that uh, this computation that we have just made is not discussed publicly. You see, it is a secret. You see, the secret of B model is that nobody nobody actually discussed this computation. And uh, you may ask, how did it happen? And what does it mean? OK? So neither in the first paper nor later, people do not discuss it. They are not discuss it in the public talks. Because they say, OK, there is no time. Everybody knows that. And they write this result. But nobody discusses that this result could not be obtained from this place. But sorry, but sorry this is supposed to be a massive uh, operation on, on what, on where, on which, which infinity algebra we are constructing or infinity. Ah, so, so OK. So it is Massey-like, OK, actually Massey-like. Mm -hmm. So uh, so what have R? Uh, maybe you may also consider it as a Massey product. So uh, Beltrami differential have a bracket. So if you take this D and go all the way here, you will get this bracket. If if I if I do what? If you take this D Dalbo, yes, and try to go to holomorphic top form with this Dalbo, I get zero. Uh, no, no. No, you will hit this mu. Okay. Because for mu, this Dalbo is a second order operator. Yes. So people used to say that they consider not just Beltrami differential. But the primary differential with the condition that d mu, and here we put omega top equals to zero. And this is like delta bv on mu equals to zero. So remember that when you plug mu inside omega top, it is this odd from Fourier transform that makes this Dalbo into delta bv, into divergence. Should, should, should there be the bar, actually? This one? Yes. No. No? You see, no. You see, it is known that I can make misprints. But I don't make misprints in the crucial places. Ah, OK, it's just for degree reason that uh, I see. No, no, not for degree reasons. No. For the very important physical reasons. Because mm -hmm. later I'll comment on this term. Mm -hmm. What does this term mean? Separately, this, this part and this part. Mm -hmm. OK? And now, now I hope you see that there is a problem. Maybe one just needs to go to the next uh, next order in, in G0. But uh, the result should be independent on G0. Ah. I see. So, how do you think? How Edward Beaton should feel with this computation? He should feel awesome. Yes, but he doesn't look feeling awesome. <laughs> so, so it happened last century, <laughs> not last conference, not last year, not even last decade. It happened 27 years ago. So here the problem is, how did it happen that never, that nobody made this computation? 
Mm -hmm. Interesting. So this computation should be discussed just uh, several months after the BCOV appeared. Okay, just imagine that BCOV is considered to be something not popular at 93. It, become, it became popular later on. So, when in the year 1994, Kansevich uh, published the homological mirror conjecture, everybody should be interested on in what is going on. So, what people actually did. What about the holomorphic anomaly? Does it... Yeah, so, of course, of course. Now we speak about holomorphic anomaly. Of course, we will discuss holomorphic anomaly at the moment, but uh, but it should be holomorphic anomaly somewhere. So, of course, what Waffa did, he says that ah, we have something, and uh, this should reproduce holomorphic anomaly. It actually reproduces holomorphic anomaly. And I'll, and I'll try to show how it actually reproduces holomorphic anomaly. But before, let us discuss the appearance of this formula. First of all... So, so it probably means that, that this zero is naive and there's some maybe boundary somewhere in the field space that contributes or something like that? Uh, of course, of course. So, uh, so what we are going to do we are going to fill in 27 years old gap, okay? So it is a problem of the last century. And actually, this problem of the last century could be solved using tools of the last century. So actually, the problem is that uh, people just, people who are paid to do this, are just not paying attention to this phenomenon. And how, how, how this could be, I don't understand. You do not need to know uh, high mathematics, I don't know, higher category theories to make this computation. Hmm? You just compute, you take G0 to zero, why not? There is no instantons here, okay. You may ask, what is going wrong? Okay, so you see, I want you to feel puzzled for a moment. Because if you don't feel puzzled, you would not uh, hear by explanation of what actually happens, okay? Mm -hmm. So I hope you are puzzled already. So you so may this, decide... is this so this correlator is is it Q exact presumably? Correlator, correlator uh, is not even Q closed. It's correlator, so we need so it's a measure. Well, the, the product of these things under the correlator, is it Q exact? You mean this one? No, V1, V2, V3, V4, G mu, G mu, oh, G mu. They are different points. Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. So uh, let me ask you, uh, what, what do you mean to take a product? To take an operator product expansion or what? Uh, sure, yeah. We, we just oh. have insertions at different points and they... Yeah, they are inserted at different marked points. It's M04. We still so, can um, ask whether this whole insertion, whether it's Q closed, Q exact... Well, these, these are Q closed and Gs are not. So I guess in some sense not. So of course, of course, of course you may say that that here, that here we have something. That uh, that uh, visa Q closed, of course. Hmm. So 
So one of the way how people reason here is the following. Let us uh, take this G, okay? And let us hit V4 with this G. So, of course, you know what we will get. We will get the formation of the theory due to the target space Beltrami differential. Okay, so, uh, so, so let us discuss it. Since nobody discussed it properly, we may discuss it, right? So, so what can we do? Let us take V4, okay? And let us compute the descent of V4, okay? To compute the descent of V4, we need to apply G minus one to V4, as we know to get V4, one. So V4 contains exactly this, mu of X pi psi. Mm. Maybe, you, maybe you may catch me here because uh, Because uh, you see, I wrote it down in terms of mu variables, okay, with pi and psi. You should catch me saying that pi actually is like this. And uh, then the question is, maybe I should put g naught square downstairs. Hmm? Still, it doesn't help. <coughs> Still, even, even this would not help. Because I have a problem like this. So you, you may try to catch me. Saying that, look, in this normalization, I have pi here, okay? Then propagator, then you may say that, that I'm cheating you that propagator between pi, that propagator between pi and uh, psi, you see, is amplified because of the, because of the G naught that is standing here. Okay, let us see, let us see. Maybe I maybe I made it wrong. So in any, so in any way, you see. So if you put here, maybe maybe I made it wrong. Uh, in any case, uh, so, so uh, let us try to redo this computation somehow. You see, um, maybe we can try to find out something. Mm -hmm. And maybe we will, will be able to find the result. So uh, maybe I made a mistake. So here is pi, yes? So pi actually has this term. So, uh, so, so still I need to put here J, J, I, J bar here. So uh, the vanishing is not like this. So pi is actually psi G, I, J bar, and I have to put G naught square downstairs. So, uh, so I made a mistake, but not a crucial mistake. 
So once again, so, so let us compute it again. So I have two psi's, one over G naught square downstairs in this vertex operator. One over G naught square, one over G naught square in G's here. So I have, sorry, one over G naught square to the power three downstairs. And I have G naught square to the power four upstairs. So it still goes like G naught square and not like as G naught square squared. Okay, I made a mistake, but not a crucial one. Which term was that that was missing? So, so you see, I was discussing the was it the, GMU? The, the say V four. V four. Yes. Mm. So when I was discussing V four, when I was discussing V four, I wrote it in terms of the pi field. Okay. 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 It is also pi side. So pi is actually gij bar times psi. So I have additional. So if I write it in terms of psi fields, I will get extra g naught square downstairs. So I have one g naught square downstairs from the fourth vertex operators and two g naught square downstairs from g. From uh, supercurrents, but I still have G naught square to the power four from four propagators. So still, it is G naught square to the power four divided by G naught square to the power three. It goes as G naught square. So I made a mistake saying that it goes as G naught square to the power two. It goes as G naught square to not to the power four to the power two. But still, it is uh, still it's like this. It still goes like this. Okay. It still goes the wrong way. So oh, you see phenomena that I described is correct, but I made the mistake putting two here instead of three. It's three actually. That stands here. So you, you, you may check this computation. And then there is a puzzle why uh, it goes to zero when G naught square goes to zero. So you may check why so, you may check why it goes to zero for the zero coupling. So, so to conclude that this thing is actually zero, you need to have a correlator of Q closed operators, right? They are Q closed, except that there's a Beltrami differential insertions. No, Beltrami differentials are considered to be Q closed. No, the world sheet one, the G G mu. Ah, oh, G mu. G mu is, is a piece of the string theory. G yeah. is not closed. Yes, but then. Uh, mm. so, so that's what I describe. What I am describing is a universal string theory given by Witten in the year 1992 in the paper Charles Simons as a string field theory. Edward Witten. So it would be very nice, you see, before discussing how B model is finite in loops <coughs> to see what, what is going on here. 
and uh, how to settle this problem. But can you briefly remind? So when we couple to gravity, we we what? We take Q of this uh, sigma model and add it to the BRS, Q BRST. T. Uh, so, uh, so when we couple to gravity, when we couple to gravity, we do the following: we take super partner of energy momentum tensor. Multiply it by Beltrami differential and consider this, this correlator as a uh, form of the moduli space. In this case, yes, yes. M04. Yes, but I want to see why it's still supposed to be. Um, it's, not, it's not supposed to be closed at all. Why it's still supposed to be metric independent? Metric, uh, when you say metric, you may ask, uh, so, so when you say that it's metric independent, you may ask uh, what, uh, what, what, what uh, do you expect to take as a metric? Well, you, you're trying to, you're arguing that it's not, it doesn't depend on G naught, right? I'm arguing, so, so people used to say, People used to say that we may consider this, uh, that, that the result is independent on the metric. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we keep the, that it depends on the only, on the complex structure. So it should not depend on the size. So these, these are general blah, blah, blah. Okay. No, 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 so, when, when we talk about much, ah, sorry. Uh... So G is a target space metric, okay. Yeah, this, this G is a target space metric. Ah. And, and I'm, so uh, I want to say that I, I'm going to change the scale. Moreover, I want to say that uh, on the Calabi Yao manifold, the only sigma model computation that I can do is computation perturbative in G naught. Okay, okay, so you're saying that it doesn't depend on the Keller class, so it shouldn't depend on the overall scale. Yes, of course. But, uh, but then I'd like to say that uh, you, see what we, you see what we have. So since, it, since it, it should not depend on the Keller scale, on the Keller class, we may consider this thing in the leading order, so we may tend you not to zero. Mm -hmm. And we see that this object goes to zero when G naught goes to zero. Okay. So I made a mistake in the power. So it goes to zero as G naught squared, not as G naught to the fourth. But then we know, but then the three point function is non zero. Yes. And then we can degenerate four point function into. We cannot degenerate because he reintegrated. So without ah, okay. without the two, sure. We can't but there is a contribution somewhere from the far away in the modular space where it degenerates into two pair of pants. You see, this is a, this is integrated thing. This is the amplitude. In other terms, we integrate over the position of Z four, if yeah. you will. Yeah. So, so we can also make. Uh, so we may also try to do but another the, computation. But there's a region in this whole integration where you have one sphere with two insertions, another sphere with two insertions, and they're connected by a thin tube. Yes. So what? I, so actually, actually, the, 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 we have this region. But uh, when we try to describe what is going on in this region, we need to put here, of course, uh, e to the t L naught plus L naught bar, okay, minus t, e to the i phi L naught minus L naught bar. You are right. I mean, isn't uh, this here, here? We need to put g not plus g not minus, or mm -hmm. or g not g not bar. But does that doesn't this region precisely correspond to the answer that you wrote that people usually give for the four point function? Uh, 
So, the, so that's, uh, so it is what we are going to discuss. Mm, okay. Because, of course, of course you are painting, you are pointing to the proper place. But we need to discuss what is going on. I, I just I just mean that if that's this resolution, so it's about the holomorphic anomaly, and isn't there a paper like the whole paper is about that? You see, the full paper should start, okay? Not with the issue of holomorphic anomaly. The full paper should start with the statement that if we take this on Kalabi Yao manifold, then the integrand, the integrand goes to zero. And uh, if you wish, we can uh, see how it happens here. And uh, so uh, here, so, so I, I'll come to the issue how it happens here in a the, in the moment. But, for, but before I'll discuss it, I want to admit the fact that this thing goes to zero. It's one thing. Another thing is that if we apply G minus one, G minus one bar to V four, so we can do it. So we are looking for uh, for a kind of what? So let us first apply G minus one to V four. So V four was mu psi psi one over G naught square. So G minus one applied to V4, of course, has uh, so 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 we may compute what is going on here. So uh, so we may do it. So we see that the field mu psi psi G naught squared if we apply G minus one, here we have one over G naught squared uh, G psi DX, what will, what will happen? So there'll be propagator between psi and psi. So this is psi one zero. And here will be psi here. And of course we'll get nice term. And this nice term would be so here we'll have G naught squared. Something like mu dx, right? Psi. And uh, what else would we have? One over G naught squared. So this, that, that's what we call V41. So it's definitely a one form because we have dx here. Okay. Now you may check how this term changes the Q. So it's, it's a good news. So Q goes into Q plus integral of V for one over a circle. Now, of course, uh, when we will apply this field, we will see an interesting uh, contribution from the propagator. I mean, this one or that one. So if we will act on the functions, by this, we can act on the functions. The bosonic propagator 
would be in order. So we will get that Q would be deformed to Q plus this one over G naught square would cancel the propagator plus mu D. Ah, so on functions, it's okay. So Q deformed would be D bar plus mu D. Very well. So here everything is, is, is okay. So, so there is no problem with deformation of Q with the help of one observable. However, there is a problem with the amplitude. Because, okay, I have this nice one observable. I, so I may apply here what? I may look at V4, two observable. So what do I expect for V4, two observable? Of course, uh, I'll take this Psi. So once again, I apply G, it has Psi DX. So let me consider Psi Psi propagator now. So I have one over G dot squared, okay? One over G naught squared here, one over G naught squared here, yes? So I will get, of course, mu dx dx divided by g naught squared. So it will be a two observable. Okay? There should be a bar somewhere. Yes. And, and there should be a metric somewhere, of course. So like i j bar, so maybe i j bar and here and here indices. So two of these indices have to be okay of the same parity. So 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 let, let us fix the indices. So so here I would uh, probably have mu i bar j I have two indices here. So it's not enough to contract. Like I, I should have something like, like index here, index here, and uh, G, J, J bar. Okay, so, so here I have a reasonable so two observable is okay. It's like this. But then the question would be, having this two observable like this, you might say that I can get it from the deformation of the action. So I, I kind of repeated the procedure. So here I have V for two. So it has two dx derivative. Now, and it has g naught square, g naught square here. Then you may ask, what, what is the correlator of the two observable with the zero observables? It's clear, I have to saturate two non-zero bosonic modes. Okay, and each of them would give me g not square and g not square. Okay, so I have one of a g not square downstairs here, and I have these two from the propagators. Once again, the total result would be g not square goes to zero, while g not square goes to zero. So. Sir, I, I, I a bit missed why you, how did you pass to the two observable? By applying g again. 
G minus one to one observable is two observable. Yeah, yeah but. Uh... Mm -hmm. well, well, where does it come from? From this two G where insertions? Come from? No, no, no. Uh, why did you have to apply G minus one twice on V four? Is it because you have this two? It, it, it's because it's so called Witten's descent. Sure, so, but because of contour switching, I guess. Yeah, you can take the contour. Of course, of course. Yeah. I think, of course. I take mu being mm -hmm. equal to d bar of v of z z bar such that v of z z bar equals to some vector v4 evaluated at point z4 it's, it equals to v4 it is a way how to contract it's a way how, how we are doing uh, uh, differential forms. So, so if this is a differential form, okay, what do we mean? I told you that uh, the value of this differential form on the tangent vector is given by taking mu in the form d bar v, where value of v as a marked point should be equal to v4. Mm -hmm. So this differential form uh, evaluated on the vectors v4 and v4 bar equals two. Sorry, so when you uh, flip so the, the contour, it also hits v1, v2, v3, we, yes. and we... Yes, so, uh, so here I take a specific gauge, okay? So by adding holomorphic vector fields here, that would not change mu. I can make V of ZZ bar such that it is V4 at Z0, but V ZZ bar at ZI for I equals one, two, three, should be equal to zero. So here I am parameterizing the moduli space by the position of Z4. Uh -huh. So what I'm explaining are standard, uh, are standard things in uh, string theory. So unfortunately, so Polchinski is not quite clear on this point. However, this is pretty well described in Swibach. Maybe not in his book, but in his papers uh, of the year like 1992. So he wrote like 100 pages explaining how we are doing, how we are getting uh, this uh, form on the modular space. So he explained all this about Beltrami differential that is d bar v such that v is like this and like that, and that this is a tangent space to the modular space, and that's what we are doing. So, So if here we have the first order pole, we will get V4. And G minus one is exactly coefficient in front of the first order pole. So that's why, so that's why we might say that this integral equals to the integral of d2 z4 v1 at z1 v2 at z2 
v3 at the 3, so zero observables, and v2 at the 4. And we integrate over the 4. CP1 without points Z1, Z2, Z3. Because if the modular space M04 is this modular space. And we see that this correlator goes like G not square. Because V4, 2 is like this. And propagator B is G not square. So in the limit, G not square goes to zero. This object is zero. And uh, you see, I am underlining this puzzle uh, to help you start thinking on what is going on. But it's actually a problem. And uh, this problem had to be addressed and solved. And of course, I know how to solve it. But before I'll tell you how to solve it, I'd like you to see that it is not a trivial thing to solve it. So there is one thing that is definitely correct, namely that the, so what I put in this line is correct. This differential form goes to zero. So it is worth mention this that such differential form goes to zero. Okay, so, so now it's a time for me. So I, I arranged this uh, talk in such way, so such that you will be puzzled for uh, for several minutes because I I I am going to explain how to save the day and what and what this would mean for string theory okay so once again there is nothing fishy about it we consider sigma modulus is the weak coupling limit so either we are physicists and we know how to treat sigma model in the weak coupling limit. Or we or not. Everybody knows. Pick up coordinates and uh, expand and uh, integrate. So here, here, so, 
So here we have to conclude that with this definition, the four point uh, amplitude is zero. Okay. <clears throat> what a nice result. Hmm? And that's why this, nobody puts this computation in their papers. Because if you put it like this, you would see, you would get zero. Okay. So I'll be right back in five minutes.
Okay, so, so you had some time, so I think pa Pavel decoupled, because, yeah, it, okay. Also, it's, yeah, been going on for two hours for now. Yes. Yes, you see, I don't want to hurry up. Okay, because if you hurry up, because you say there is no time to think, you you are missing essential points. Because you know now you have a meeting or you have something to do or you have this or that and that, you 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 just have no time to think. And you see, I specifically was discussing this in these details, I uh, kind of made a unessential mistake, okay, that I corrected. So if I can make mistake and correct it, it means that uh, I'm not, uh, I am not uh, remembering formulas and putting them down. I will. I would like to show you that it's possible to derive what is going on. You actually can deform complex structure by the standard law that that you have a two observable. So integral of one observable actually uh, deforms complex structure, as we see. But the correlator of two observable associated to this one observable goes to zero at G naught, going to zero limit. And uh, I would say nobody cares. So when I was writing a paper on similar thing, uh, like 20 years ago, uh, I, I felt myself uncomfort, uh, uncomfortable. So I, I gave some explanation, but I was not uh, discussing it in detail because, uh, okay, 20 years ago. So nobody discussed it, discussed it. So I got a nice result. But I have not discussed what's going on. And uh, so finally, I decided that, this, that these things should be discussed. Because, uh, because you may think that it is a problem only with the B model. But actually, it is a piece of the problem that happens in string theory. So, are you ready to get the, the answer? Okay. So I mean, now, so you see, so uh, now you are ready to see the answer. And the answer is the following. The tricky thing happens in the order of limits. You may ask what kind of order of limits I'm talking about. So when I was studying calculus, there were some stupid mathematical theorems, like that some of the uh, that limit of a sum is sum of the limits, etc. And I consider them trivial and not interesting. Of course, I knew how to prove them. Sure. But uh, I thought it's a silly thing to prove obvious things. And uh, 
But there is also another thing, another uh, theorem, and it was a theorem about order of limits. And it says, it said, that it is not safe to interchange the order of limits. That if you interchange the order of limits, you can get uh, different results. Okay. So everybody, everybody knows this theorem. However, uh, to know this theorem and to apply it in the real world, it's hard. So when I say order of limits, what do I mean? And on what are the limits here? So first thing is G naught. Because we are looking at the limit, G naught is going to zero, right? So you may ask, where is the second limit here? Kolya, where is the second limit? Colliding points. All right. So when you say colliding points, the second limit is non-compactness of modular space. The, the space is non-compact. So the question is how to define the integral over the non-compact space. The trick is you approximate the non-compact space by a compact space, and then you take the limit when this compact space covers the full non-compact space. So you see, Let me give you an example. Consider the following function. Okay. So here we have a nice integral. If we first take, so minus infinity to plus infinity means minus T capital to T capital, okay? So now I'd like to take two limits. First, limit when G naught square goes to zero first, and then t goes to plus infinity. So what will be the limit of this? i of g naught and t. What would you say? So if I first take g naught to zero, this would go to one. This would go to zero. One times zero is, sorry, not x dx, just dx. Then, uh, then like this. G naught. So uh, if I consider this integral, then uh, if I first take take g naught to zero. I will get zero. And then limit when t goes to infinity of zero is zero. So in this order it's zero. If I take another order, limit g dot goes to zero, and here for, and here I take first limit t going to plus infinity. 
of I, G not T, is what? If I first take uh, a limit from T to infinity, I get one, okay, pi. If I then take G not to zero, it will be one. Okay, one is it will be constant. It's a well-known phenomenon. So, how do we understand this well-known? Okay, maybe this phenomena that is known. Uh, let me write another example. Integral from zero to t, g not x. Okay, I'll call it t. Let us compute this integral. So this is actually related to the example that we had. If you first, if you first take limit when g not square goes to zero, and then take a limit where t goes to infinity. What will we get here of i? We will get here zero because this goes, this, this limit is zero. If we take the all the way around, we will get one, all right? So if I first take the integral So this is of course one and if I then take the limit g naught square goes to zero, I will get one. So this is the question of how do we interchange limits, okay? So now we see that this model example is very crucial one because we because when we study string theory we need to say what are we actually doing so in order to get an uh, interesting result, we have to take this first, okay? So it means that we have to com compactify the moduli space before we take the zero coupling limit. Otherwise, we are in trouble. Okay? But we may compactify it only if G not zero is finite and this is unaccessible in the perturbative sigma model because in perturbative sigma model we have the power series in genot like in almost all functional integrals 
when we say that we are computing uh, functional integral, we have a power series of coupling constant. So saying that we have power series of the coupling constant, and we don't even know if, it's a, if uh, the result is convergent or not, means that uh, we are always working uh, for infinitesimal small g0. Then it means that we cannot cannot run this procedure. So let me put it in let me put it another way. Just imagine that we are doing this. Of course, we may ask, you see, t goes to plus infinity. However, uh, plus infinity is something inaccessible. When we take this first limit, we need to go to some uh, big T when uh, things stabilize, okay? It's a limit. It's a limit of a function. So if function has a limit, you go to some extent until function is appro approximately equals to its limit, right? So when does function uh, get its limiting value? And of course it's clear. So T should be bigger than one over G naught square, right? I'll write it like this. So if I have this relation, I will get one. But what, the, but what does it actually mean? It means that perturbative theory is not applicable anymore. Because in perturbative theory, we don't even know the radius of convergence. We have only formal power series. So we are, so no way we can define it. You cannot say that you define the thing using a functional integral. And uh, actually, you have no other definition of the sigma model. It's a functional integral. You have only perturbative definition, or you may think that sigma model is exactly solvable. But uh, sigma model is not exactly solvable. Moreover, uh, we know that sigma model looks like Calabi Yau manifold only in the vicinity of the zero coupling limit. So it means that we are actually in great, great trouble. Okay? I mean that if I put it this way, there is no definition of the type B string theory on Calabi Yau manifold. You see, just no definition. So I want you to understand that this looks as a crisis because we don't know what we are talking about. String theory is not defined in the standard way. So the only thing that we can do to save the game is to change definition, okay? So now I am in the very scary position because I have to change 
I have to do something that I am not allowed to do to change definition of the string theory. Because if I change it here, then I will, then people would ask me why I changed it for B model only. So Edward Witten uh, was teaching us that uh, we are actually studying universal string theory. The same for A model, B model, bosonic string, super string, universal string theory. And if I change definition here, I would be, I, I would probably have to change it in the bosonic string and super string, yes? You see, so the so you see it's, it's something very big to change the definition of string theory. However, this was already done. Okay. So, so let me let me explain why this model is exactly what happens in two-dimensional theory. Why this model is actually what happens? It is because. Consider a cylinder. And you know we have this L0 plus L0 bar. Minus dt G0 plus G0 bar. Minus d5 I d5. G0 minus G0 bar. So here we have to integrate. Now, now what is L naught plus L naught bar? We know that uh, the energy momentum tensor is one over G naught squared G i j bar D x i D x j bar. Okay. And let us compute the action of L naught on say function of X and X bar. So I am looking for the second order pole. I have two propagators. So here I have J G naught squared and here I have G naught squared. So L naught applied to the function is actually no surprising g naught square Laplacian written in metric g applied to a function okay so i do have this scenario so i actually have here And epsilon and E is the eigenvalue of the Laplace. So it's so that's what actually happens. So now I am in position not to say that you can compute. Uh, zero from one by changing the limits. Okay. I want to say that there should be a new definition of uh, string theory. And this definition goes as follows.
So new definition of string theory. So the author of this new definition is Barton Zwiebach. Who is kind of well known being an MIT full professor. Okay. So everybody know him. So he said that the integral of a MGN. So what people are calling integral of a MGN should be considered, should, should not be considered as a literal integral over MGN. He said, that the space MGN has to be divided into pieces. I don't know how to write properly, but how to do how to write a picture. But actually, this space should be divided into pieces. So there should be some piece called irreducible. And this should correspond. to Riemann surfaces with loops and with boundaries. And, uh, and uh, then, so no, let me, let, me put, let me explain it starting from the example and then I'll come to this three book definition. So let me consider M04. So M04 is CP1 minus three points. I call them Z1, Z2, Z3. We can call them zero, one, and infinity. So this is non-compact. We need to study a disks around these points. and consider the complement of these disks as M04 irreducible. So then, Then the, then the correlator of four vertex operators in terms of Zwiebach integral. Let me put here Zwiebach, Z of Zwie, should be defined as an integral over M04 irreducible of what I wrote before. Plus, 
Last one. Last contributions from so-called reducible configurations. So what? So what I wrote here. So here I have Riemann surface. With two mark points. And the boundary. So what is it? It is of course a disk with two mark points inside. So moduli space of this disk has real dimension one. So you can understand this disk as follows. You can point put point number one at zero. You can put put, put point number two at distant at distance one half from zero at some angle. So here is the angle phi. Then, then you compute this functional integral. as a state on the boundary. And here, with vertex operators V1 and V2 standing here, And then you put in the propagator, uh, and and you can so you consider this as a uh, as a vertex. I don't know how to call it, like v one v two. And here we put v one v two. And here we put propagator, and here we put v3, v4. And you integrate uh, around angles, and then what the propagator is. So propagator is, of course, homotopy. of Q BRST together with the G not minus. This is an answer. 
And of course, here you have three configurations. Two other terms. So, so the claim is that this is a definition. Then you may take e to the minus t L not plus L not bar plus. So you may take this integral g dot plus g dot minus. You may take this as a propagator. So here you do not need, or you may consider this as a propagator, or you may even consider this even this as a propagator. So actually, this propagator integrated does not depend on G0. So, because it is integrated, and it is this combination that replaces the original prescription of integration over the modular space. And then, with this definition, you might take limit when G naught square goes to zero. In this case, irreducible component would go to zero. And you would be left only with reducible components. And it is these reducible components that would reproduce you field theory like structure. And this is BCOV. Okay. So. I actually have a feeling that people are tired. Hmm? So Kolya is not asking questions. Well, uh, this is the answer that I was anticipating, but uh, it is true that it's it's like a bit over time. But I, I still want to say, you see, I went slowly. I still want to want to to convince you that it's important logical step mm -hmm. because uh, now I'll make an announcement. If you do it this way, string theory goes to field theory. So actually, there is you may say if you cannot consider a finite G nodes, there is no. Uh, there is no other formulation. Everything stands here. And uh, for any Calabiao that is not uh, exactly solvable, and there are no exactly solvable Calabiaos, this is the only definition that you have. And, and uh, that's where you get these three 
three level uh, amplitudes. And you may think that it's not only three level amplitudes. You need to analyze all amplitudes. And you will see similarly that uh, everything goes away or, or almost everything goes away. So I have some uh, doubts about loops. So in this sense, for B mod, so B model is not actually a string theory, you see? B model formulated in these terms is a field theory with these very peculiar vertices. So that was exactly the point of BCOV, right? What? That was exactly the point of BCOV paper, right? In BCOV paper, they put it very differently because I have read the paper. In BCOV paper, they never mentioned Swibach, okay? They never mentioned this decomposition. They never mentioned the phenomena that uh, the vertex at G0 going to zero goes to zero. They said that instead, that instead, they are giving another definition of the amplitude and they use some kind of connection. And if you give this another definition of the amplitude at the three levels, it, does, it isn't clear first uh, what is going on with the loops. So it is the first question. And the uh, second question is uh, how this is related to the string theory that people used to study. So we can, call, you may call it Swibach modification of the string theory. However, it's not a modification. It's a Swibach reformulation. Then what Swibach managed to show in his paper is that, uh, you see, there is an arbitrariness of this decomposition of reducible and irreducible. So finite uh, answer does not depend on this decomposition. So this is how Zwiebach works in B model. But I want to say that this Zwiebach modification is not only something that you are doing with B model. If you look at bosonic string, and if you read the Edward Witten's paper of on uh, of I epsilon, you may see that you have to modify the bosonic string prescription in the similar way. However, in bosonic string, this modification is not enough because a lot in bosonic string is not positively positive, positively defined. So in bosonic string, in propagator, you need to put here I. So Zwiebach never put here I, but uh, the point is that you have to put here I. So, so, uh, so Zwiebach never considered it. So let me say, that I don't know how to call it. Swibach Lawrence, okay. Okay, so the best thing would be to call it Swibach Witten. Ah. So this so-called propagator should be considered as an integral with imaginary I here. And this is a new definition of string theory that probably works for bosonic strings and uh, B model. So if it works for bosonic strings and B model, maybe it is the proper definition of string theory. So two things, two problems. First problem, infrared divergences of uh, bosonic string. And second problem, 
strange zero of uh, B model. So these two problems look very different. However, they both are solved by the very single trick go to go to Zwiebach reformulation. And it doesn't matter why, what was the motivation of Zwiebach to do his reformulation. My message is this reformulation is absolutely necessary. So this, so what I'm what I'm talking about necessary Zwiebach Witten reformulation of universal string theory. So Zwiebach invented vertices and propagators, and Zwiebach mistakenly takes propagator with Euclidean time. Okay. Witten says, not explicitly, but you may read it behind his text, that you should put here imaginary I. So if you combine Zwiebach ideas of 92 and Witten's ideas of 2013, you are, you are getting the Zwiebach Witten modification that seems to be the description of the universal string theory. Okay, so my contribution is that I put together Zwiebach modification and Witten modification in the single framework. Okay, I'll ask after I stop recording something. Sorry? No, no, I'll ask later after after the recording is over. Okay, so uh, so let, let, let us stop the recording and then you may ask, okay? <laughs> okay, yes, yes, it's... Uh, so please stop the recording. <laughs>